I had never known what true despair and absolute hopelessness felt like. And finally, after about 48 hours, I realized this is not helping me focusing on this negative outcome. And so I said, you know what? My God is a lot bigger than my condition. And I'm going to spend time just praying and doing everything I can in my power to optimize my healing. Welcome back. We are with Dr. Josh Axe again for part two. The conversation was so good. I extended it so we could have two shows dedicated to getting all of his great information and improving our health. We are still in our health series, of course. I am teaching my shows on Thursdays with everything that I have learned in this past year, kind of a non-expert's view, which is so fun, and then bringing in experts here on Monday. Now, Today with Josh, we are going to talk about sugar and seed oils and the really important role that our mindset plays in our health. You're going to love this one just like you love the last one. Now, without further ado, Dr. Josh Axe, as well as just the daily stressful life that we're living in. It's an election year. Yeah. We've got, we've got all these things going on that stress people out. What is your best stress protocol? Like what's mm. helping you right now? Yeah. So a couple things. If I think about what are the two things that I do that help me the most? Most of the time, stress, this is interesting, okay? There is a brilliant psychologist. Uh, she's a professor from Stanford. Her name's Aaliyah Crum. And, and l- l- let me share with you for, like one of her studies that's interesting, but then we'll talk about uh, something else. So she did a study called the Milkshake Study. And they had two groups of people. One, they gave them what they told were, they said, hey, here's a low calorie shake. It's like 150 calories. Okay. Mm -hmm. They gave another group a shake and they said, hey, this is a really indulgent shake. It's, I don't, by the way, I'm going to get these numbers wrong, but let's say it's like 750, 800 calories, it's a very high calorie. Okay. And then we said, hey, we want to see, okay, hey, let us know if you're hungry during the day, you know, let's look at your breakfast, your lunch and dinner then, how hungry, like all that sort of thing. Well, the group that was told they had a low calorie shake they were starving. I mean, all day they were like, okay, I got to eat something. They were much more hungry. The group that had the high calorie shake that were told they had the high calorie shake, they were, they were full and they ate less throughout for their other meals. Well, both groups were given the same shake. My point with that is our perception really is important and stress isn't all bad. If I go into, and I know I'm going to maybe have some confrontation with my spouse or at work, or I've got a big deadline, or you know my kids misbehave, whatever it is. If you can go in with the perspective of I'm not called to change the person, I'm called simply to love them, operate with the greatest understanding I can. Is that process of really self awareness, self distancing, a form of emotional and spiritual intelligence? If I go in with that sort of perspective, it's a lot less stressful. So two people can be in the very identical stressful quote unquote situation. One of them. Their cortisol spikes, their adrenaline, their epinephrine, their norp- all, all of these stress hormones go up. And another person, serene, no change whatsoever, hardly going on in their physiology. And so the thing I just want to mention there is I do think that our perspective, even about stress, here's another one. They did a study on people that were eating unhealthy food. And the one group that believed what they were eating was very toxic and unhealthy. And the other group thought, well, it's not that bad for me. It's fine. Like I prayed for it. I blessed it. The group that was eating that believed, and it's the same food. The group that believed that the food was very toxic, very bad for them. They had worse physiological effects when they were both eating the same food. I think part of this is why, why do we pray for our food? Why do we bless our food? I mean, I think there's a, a, a psychological, but also a spiritual reality of this is actually, I'm blessing the food. I just wanted to pre-frame that answer because I do think our perception about stress is important. Now, at the same time, we are just doing too many things constantly. I mean, this is a big cause of hypothyroid, of adrenal fatigue, of just why people are sick. In fact, 80% of doctor's visits have a stress component that's causing their disease directly. 80%? Yeah, it's crazy. It's incredibly high. But if you think about it, I mean, stress is going to cause cortisol to go up. Cortisol also causes insulin to go up. And if cortisol and insulin, those two hormones in particular, if those are, and then of course, those affect thyroid, and then the other affects melatonin, and then that affects estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. So hormones are like a domino. You hit one, cortisol goes up, 
every other hormone in your entire body then is thrown off every single one. So that's why stress is really so affects us so negatively if we don't have the right perception, if we're just getting too much of it. And so what I would say is the best practice is one is in order to change your perspective, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And so I would say, focus on God here. When the most stressed I've ever been was the last election. I, I never was very involved in politics. Okay. I was not, but I decided, I felt like there's a very important election. I was very aware. Mm -hmm. And I watched the news more than I'd ever had and really kept up with it. I realized after doing that for two months, I realized, you know what? Like I'm, I can actually tell like physiologically, like I'm not well, my like skin's red. I'm like not sleeping well at night. I, and so I, one fasting from news, fasting from things that are toxic. You know, if, if you read, watch the news one hour a day versus you take that hour and read the Bible or pray or listen to a spiritual growth podcast, or whatever, one hour a day, your stress levels will be radically different, radically. So I would say reading a spiritual growth book, going to you know growth group, doing things to grow spiritually, just praising God, listening to that sort of stuff. So that's number one. Number two would be walking in nature. It's incredibly restorative, and this is based on clinical research. This isn't just my opinion. It's based on clinical research. It's based on thousands of years of Asian, med Asian medicine. Walking outside is a tremendous stress reliever for most anybody. I'm not talking about being on your phone and doing all that stuff, but just going outside on a walk is a big stress reliever. So I would say those two things. Go to your Bible, go to some time and really for you know sp spiritual connection, and then walk. Walk a lot. And talk to God while you walk. You can do both together. Pray, you know, praise God while you walk. But those are probably the biggest stress relievers out there. And then there's other things too. I mean, people can take magnesium as a mineral is great for relaxation. Herbs like lavender oil, chamomile tea, those are great things. CBD oil even. I mean, these are things, hops. I mean, these are all things that can help calm the nervous system. But to get it to the root, those two things are probably the, the, the most important. That's fantastic, which leads me into what I want to talk about next. You have a great book out on mindset, which I think may be a surprise for some people who are used to you talking research and, you know, and do this and here's, here are all the details of health. But as you've alluded to with so many things you talked about, the way we think about things, our mindset about things controls so much. So for you, what did you discover and what made you know that mindset was the next big topic for you? Well, I knew this from years of running a functional medicine clinic that mindset was the most important part of healing. I would throw mindset up there with sort of spiritual. I'm going to put those two together. Um, and even the stress, that thing that I related, I mean, I could tell typically very quickly with patients if they were going to see results or not based on their mindset. Let me give you an example. I would have people come in and fill out a, a, what I call a diet diary. They would sort of let me know what they were eating, breakfast, lunch, dinner, supplements they were taking. And typically the first visit, I would go over results and give greater recommendations the second visit. But the first visit, I still wanted to give them something prat practical to do. So I would say to them something like, hey, listen, um, I see what you're eating here. This isn't ideal. What I want you to do between now and when I see you next time is I want you to just change breakfast. Okay. Mm -hmm. By the way, just changing breakfast, that's one third of your diet. I mean, people would oftentimes come back after a week to see me and they would say, wow, I can't believe that, you know, just from that one change. So I would say something to them like, okay, I see you're eating this special case cereal with the skim milk, with the bagel with cream cheese, with the, whatever, whatever people were doing. Yeah. And I would say, instead, let's do the superfood smoothie. Some berries, some coconut milk, some collagen, some protein powder, or here's some other options, right? Let's do this. And I would get one or two responses. One was, oh, hey, can I, you know, can, I can't do this. Can I do the, you know, like it was this massive disappointment. They felt like I was just, they were so focused on all the things I was taking away from them, mm. which I never even mentioned taking anything away. I just said, eat a smoothie. And the other group was like, this is great. I can do this. Great. And obviously, you know, which ones saw better results. I mean, the people that felt like they were being deprived, they were focused on all the things they couldn't have versus I can do this. This is great. I mean, I told people, hey, you can eat chocolate cake. Just follow this recipe, right? <laughs> you know, you can eat chicken Parmesan. Just use the gluten-free flour. And you can still do cheese for a lot of you. Let's just do the buffalo mozzarella. You know, let's just, so, so I think mindset's really important. And by the way, when I set out to write this book, it was really about mindset medicine. How do you heal with the power of the mind? 
And when I set out to write this book, I had my own crisis that I never thought I would experience in a million years. I injured my back a few years before lifting weights. After doing a lot of things, didn't get fully well. I then got something called stem cell done. And it's where they take your own bone marrow, they concentrate it, re-put it back in. So it's your own tissues and how it helps the area heal. Well, I got that done once and the results were incredible. I mean, I went from like at 50% for being a couple of years all the way up to probably 90%, 95%. I'd say 95. I mean, but I still, after that, I had a, on occasion, if I would go on long plane rides and things like that, I have a, this little aching in one part of my back. And I thought, okay, I'm going to get this stem cell done one more time. And I bet I'll get back to 100%. So I went, got it done. By the way, this is like the top clinic in the United States. I mean, it's it's based out of the United States. They they do treatments in K- Grand Cayman Island and like a the Ritz Carlton right next door and all marble. It's a really nice place. But something went wrong when I got this injection, and I felt worse and worse and worse. Finally, after a month, I had to wear a back brace. Finally, I could barely walk. And then one morning, I woke up and I couldn't walk. The pain was so excruciating. And my family and I were living between Puerto Rico and Nashville, and I was in Puerto Rico, and. I couldn't move. And we had to call an ambulance. This is about a year and 10 months ago. Uh, Call an ambulance, have them come pick me up. I had to get an MRI. And it came back in the reports that I had an infection in my spine. I had an infection that was not only in my disc, it had gotten into my bone. It was in my vertebra and by my spinal cord. I then had to take a private, a medical flight from Puerto Rico to Florida because this is an emergency. And sat down with the infection. Actually, I didn't sit down because I was on a gurney. Like people were having to lift me in and out of the plane in the hospital. I couldn't move. And and he said, Josh, listen, here's your prognosis. If if everything goes perfectly, your best case scenario is you're going to be in chronic pain the rest of your life, and you'll be the first person to know when bad weather goes through. He said, the worst case scenario is this could kill you because it's in your disc, your bone, and by your spinal cord, it's in your L5 vertebra throughout the whole thing. And he said, there's a really good chance you're going to be permanently disabled from this. He said, there's a chance we'd have to go in and, you know, remove part of the bone and put in rods in your spine and all these things. And, and I'm, and by the way, this is so crazy because a few months before I didn't have to go get this procedure done. This is supposed to be like a minor medical procedure. Mm -hmm. I I was like throwing my two-year-old 10 feet in the air in the pool. I was swimming, biking, running, squatting, deadlifting, felt great, best shape of my life. And so for about 48 hours, Allie, I just felt like an emotional, spiritual, mental wreck. I just thought, how could this happen? This mistake. And I just, and so, and there were emotions I'd never experienced before. I had never known what true despair and absolute hopelessness felt like. And finally, after about 48 hours, I realized this is not helping me focusing on this negative outcome. And so I said, you know what? My God is a lot bigger than my condition. And I'm going to spend time just praying and doing everything I can in my power to optimize my healing. And so I, and the doctor told me the treatment that you need to do is we're going to do, we're going to need to do three months of antibiotics via IV or six weeks of IV and another six weeks oral. Because when you have an infection in your, in your spine, in that area, it, it has very little blood flow in your disc and bone. And so the only way to get it in there is you have to do very high dose for a very long period of time. And, and so, but I realized, by the way, I hadn't taken a medication since high school. Like really, like I was, I was 40 and last time was, I remember got my wisdom teeth taken out when I was 19 was the last time I'd taken anything because I'm so natural and have never needed to. And so I said, okay, but I'm going to do my own research with this of how can I optimize my healing? And I was read a study on hyperbaric chambers hmm. and there was a group that did this hyperbaric chamber. That's what happens when you put you you have oxygen that's then compressed into your body when you get in this this tank. And so I found out there was a group that was able to reduce their antibiotic time to just four weeks when they did hyperbaric chamber and they had a spinal infection. So I got on the antibiotics, which I didn't want to do, but I had to. So I did. I got in a hyperbaric chamber every day for two hours for for like six weeks. I got IVs of silver, something called methylene blue, ozone a lot of other nutrients. I was doing, uh, the only thing I ate was meat and vegetables. I was intermittent fasting. I did everything I, and I was praying daily. In fact, I mean, I had, and people may have different opinions of these people, but I was really grateful. I had John and Lisa Bevere pray for me. Bill Johnson pray for oh, me. They'll, they'll but, pray the house down. Yeah. Benny Hen called me and prayed for me. I had <laughs> Heidi Baker. So I'm mean, have some amazing friends and people in the spiritual space. Just amazing, amazing people. And I had all of them praying for me. And after two weeks, I felt about 1% better. 
and then a little better and a little better. So I started healing. It took me 10 months before I could walk. I didn't walk at all for 10 months. And then I was on a walker for two months. So I, I couldn't walk unassisted for, for a year. And so now, right now, I'm probably about an 85%. I think I'll be 100% by the end of this year. I don't have pain every day. I'm back lifting weights. I'm carrying my daughter. I'm back. So I am much, much better than the best that, doc, that doctor said I would be. And that's why some people might have followed me, didn't see me for almost two years because that's what I was going through. And um, I'm just now getting to the other side of it. So anyways, this book that I wrote called Think This, Not That really turned into a book about mindset medicine, but also how do you live your best life possible? I mean, they're the principles that most changed my life. How do you find your purpose, build a strong identity? How do you heal with the mind? Here's something else I was aware of, and then I'll stop talking because I know I've just talk, talked a lot. No, but fascinating. Go for it. Yeah. People don't realize how powerful the mind is and something that we call the placebo effect. I mean, there, during World War I, there was a doctor, and he's the one that essentially came up with the placebo effect. He didn't know it at the time, but he was taking care of the fallen soldiers in World War I. These are men that had lost their arms, their legs. I mean, they were in excruciating pain. And so they gave them all the drug morphine, which we know to be a very powerful drug. Well, he ran out of morphine. He ran out of this drug. And so he thought, well, I've got to give these soldiers something. So he started giving them sugar pills. And you know what's crazy? Around 30 to 40% of them saw the same pain relief from taking a sugar pill as they did from morphine. Amazing. I mean, the fact that our brains can create chemicals that could numb our body to that degree is absolutely crazy. And in a very similar way, there's something called neuroplasticity. Your body can start creating new nerve path neural pathways. It can send growth factors and stem cells to areas of your body to heal it. If you, had hypo, if you have hypothyroidism, you need to be thinking and knowing your cells and your thyroid are regenerating. If you have chronic pain, if you have any issue, infertility, the same thing, you've got to believe and know and have faith that your body can heal. By the way, the opposite's true. There's something called the nocebo effect. There was a real study on this. There was a man who was diagnosed with liver cancer. He was told he had three months to live and the man died three and a half months later. They went and did his autopsy. He didn't have liver cancer. He had a small benign tumor that could have been removed was fine on, on the side of his liver and should have lived another 30, 40 years. And there's a lot of case studies like that. So what we believe, and by the way, of course, biblically, we hear this all the time, your belief, your faith, these things have healed you. Those are very important. So anyways, in the book, I get into also how to overcome limiting beliefs, how to heal. It was, it's a New York times bestseller. It's called think this, not that I think everybody would really enjoy it. It's the best book I've written. I know I've written a lot of health books, but I think it's the book that I think is the most transformational for people who not only want to be healthier physically, but also mentally and spiritually. Yeah, absolutely. It's an amazing book. And I've had you on so long. We're breaking this show into two episodes because we wanted to learn so much from you. So thank you for spending so much time with us. One last fun question. What is a product that made you text someone and told them that they needed to have it? Oh, wow. By the way, this happens a lot because my mom is always volunteering me to do, you know, still patient consults with, with people and a lot of other people. And I love, by the way, I love doing it. I do it for uh, a lot of people still. I recommend a lot. And my, my last text was, I think it was actually an herb for a woman. Uh, she needed Don Kwai. So if anybody has, a lot of women actually could benefit from this herb. It's probably the most prescribed herb for women in Asia. Uh, if you have fatigue, hypothyroid, just borderline, just kind of not feeling well. A lot of women are not fully anemic, but they're pre-anemic. And so Don Kwai is probably the best supplement they could take. Another one I recommend a lot is probiotics. I just think for a lot of people, taking a high dose probiotic will just do them a lot of benefits. Methylated B vitamin was another one I recommended recently. It's supplements. I mean, if you want to know what I recommend to people all the time, it's diet and it's supplements for, for, for most people. Uh, well, this has been so great. Thank you for joining us. Tell everyone the best way to keep in touch with you. Yeah. So I, I would encourage you. I've got a podcast where I cover a lot of health topics and personal growth topics. It's called the Dr. Josh Ack Show. It's on Apple, Spotify, YouTube. I mean, maybe there's something that I just touched on, but you want to know more about. Again, maybe it's hypothyroid. Maybe it's Lyme disease, whatever it is. You can go to YouTube and just search Dr. Josh Ack's hypothyroid or something like that. And you'll see I've covered a lot of these in depth and you can watch those videos. So I think that's the best place to probably learn more. My social handle on pretty much everything is at Dr. Josh Axe. I'm very active on Instagram and YouTube in particular. 
And um, I would say those are probably the two, two best places to find me. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. It has been amazing. Awesome, Allie. Thanks for having me. So great, right? You know what time it is. It is time to share this podcast with other people so you can be entered to win a book. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that you like it and leave a comment. And I will leave a comment to you and let you know if you win. If you're listening to this, take a screenshot, put it on Instagram, tag me, tag Josh, and you'll be entered to win a special copy of Josh's book. I hope you enjoyed this two-part episode with Dr. Axe, and I'm so glad you're here. I love that we have this time together every week to invest in ourselves because an investment in you, in your spiritual health, in your emotional health, and in this series, your physical health benefits everyone in your life. I believe in what's inside of you. I believe in your dreams. I believe that all of the work that you're doing on yourself is important. You are making an impact on this world for good. And we can't live out our callings. We can't impact this world for the good. We can't expand the kingdom if we're limping through life, if we don't feel good, if we're slowly poisoning ourselves with things, right? That's why you're here. It's why you're here every week to build yourself up, to get a little bit stronger, to gain more wisdom, to gain more knowledge so you can go out in the world and do wonderful things because we're not meant to just survive. We are meant to thrive. We're meant to live life abundantly. I always say internally that my show, my books, my work, the app that's coming up, I'm here to take women where things are good. We want to make them great. That's what we do on this show. That's why we do what we do. We're not trying to make everything great and everything amazing to build ourselves up, but because God has created you to stand strong and bring something special and unique to this world that only you can bring. And you got to be ready to do that, right? I love that I get to coach you. I love that I get to equip you every week. So keep stepping up, keep showing up, keep loving well, because you know the truth. You cannot break a woman who gets her strength from God. I'll be back with you on Thursday, and I hope you have a great week. (coughs) It wouldn't be me if I wasn't coughing. Okay. Giving us, I don't know, I didn't write this part out. Um, We're learning. I don't know we're learning. Trying to, trying to stop recording. Here we go.